I actually recorded this video with her. But it seemed as if I was rushing through things and I wasn't really getting into the crux of the whole matter because I was trying to stop myself from rambling. And I really brushed over some important things. And so I'm re-recording it. So I am Emma Popo. We are in December. This is a late post, but I said in my blog post, which I'm going to link below, that I will expatiate on this in a video. And this is what that is. Yay, November was great. Go and read about November, read about December. We're in the end of the year. And this thing that I do, these video vlogs or whatever that I do, it really helps me because it helps me look at the past and really evaluate what I've learned and how I'm growing and how my mentality is changing. So, all that aside, I'm going to be talking about relationships and I'm going to talk I'll be talking about my life and marriage and relationships and just to get into it I just want to inform you that right from my youth I have had I have had battles with self-esteem and self-image issues and I am still having those battles even today and I thank God because he is healing it even now and those battles birthed some very 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 toxic things that i am still walking through now and which i have to be very careful in addressing because i realized that it has really mangled me and formed me into this mold and it it is taking only the grace of god to remove it remove me from the mold and now what that self-esteem issue did was that it really changed me like right from time, my sister used to tell me that I, I used to be this happy-go-lucky type as a kid, and I used to make I make I used to joke that I used to be so happy as a kid, and life molded me into this cynical creature. Like life stole my dimple. I don't know if it's still there. I used to have a dimple. It's gone now. Shadow of a dimple. Anyway, and like in relationships, right from time, right when when I was a kid, like. I always imagined that I would marry like the best human being in the entire world, like Prince Charming, like I was the fantasy head in the clouds type. And as time went on, like the, the self-centeredness, I usually call it self-centeredness, when it has to do with like self-image and low self-esteem and lack of confidence because the attention is all about yourself like oh this person doesn't like you because you did something wrong and that's a story for another day but the self-centeredness made me to believe that crossing that level in my life is something impossible and hard like it told me words like who would ever end up with someone like you and like how can you even imagine that like look at the people around you if it is by a checklist they are more beautiful than you more intelligent than you and like even them struggle with relationship what makes you think that you are better very toxic stuff as i said before and it took it took God had to take me through a real grinder and he's still taking me through a real grinder to like squeeze all that negativity out of me. But over time, it made me like, okay, for context sake, I am 27 years old now. I have never been in a relationship in my life. And it's not really something I look down on. Like I've seen people that they are like, Oh, you've not been in a relationship in your life. What happened? But like, right from time, it, it, it has always been something important to me. Like, I was surrounded by people who, like, relationships. Relationships. Today, tomorrow, they're in a new relationship. And, like, somehow that negative self-esteem wanted me to devalue myself because of that thing and i thank god because god has helped me to grow 
beyond that aspect. Um, so as I was saying, I forgot what I was saying. I've lost my train of thought. Either way, anyway, to move ahead now for what I was saying, I had low self-esteem issues. I used to have this fantasy of marrying a perfect person, but these thoughts were contended with by the thought that I wasn't good enough, blah, blah, blah. God has been healing me. Now, where am I now? Or where was I before? So after all that, I came to a place that was like, okay, I'm not even going to focus on that because that is causing me a lot of grief and trouble. I'm not even going to think about marriage. I'm just going to live life and pray to God and dedicate all of me to God because like you often hear the season of singleness. I, I said, this is my season of singleness. This is my season of learning. And God actually taught me that, okay, in any situation that you find yourself, there is a purpose for it. If you have been single all this time, probably God wants you to work on yourself. Apparently I had issues to be worked on. I had self-esteem issues and the rest. And even though the devil was telling me that, okay, nobody would ever like you because of this and that and this, I thought that this, my season of singleness, would be the perfect time to work on those things. So from all this time down to now, there is growth. But as I am, there is something, I, I have a kind of extremist attitude. I have no chill. So I started believing that, okay, since for 27 years, I've not been in a relationship. Like, the devil has really used this to cause me to cry and cause me sadness. Like, if I, pe 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 <laughs> I can't speak English, if I am perpetually single, what is the negativity there? Now, this is not God telling me, but this is me trying to cushion, cushion the blow of the pain that those dark voices would have caused me. So I'm like, if I am perpetually single, if I never marry anybody ever, even though deep down in my heart, that Anne of the fairy tale, fairy tale Prince Charming is still there. Okay, if that thing doesn't come, I'll be fine. I'll be happy. In fact, I'm not even going to focus on it at all, which is kind of good, but also has its downside because you are subduing and suppressing something that God may have put that desire in my heart. Like in Genesis, God did not create Adam and create Eve to be alone. God made them for a purpose. God does everything for a purpose. And like the, for the reason that I have always wanted to be in a relationship and I have always wanted to have someone who would value me and who would love me regardless of my flaws. Because And why that thing always resonated so deeply with me is that Jesus loves us despite our flaws like no matter how bad you are you can come to him and he can save you and in the same way it always mirrored that those negative voices in me that told me i've spoken for eight minutes okay that told me that that's part of your flaws nobody is going to like you and if i actually found somebody who would love me regardless you'd be like look he said, despite my flaws, nobody went, look, look, it's just like what Jesus did for me in the physical realm. Somebody loves me. Somebody cares about me. So, so, like somebody finds me useful and finds me as an asset. And like, that's the thought that went on in my head. So even though in this phase of me now, I said, okay, I'm just going to focus solely on my life and my relationship with God and making myself successful and making myself work as a writer and focusing on my music, my non-existent music career, then like I can ignore that pain. But something weird happened to me this year and I, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but it's true. And I had like feelings in my heart that came out of nowhere, ghost feelings. I was like, what is going on with me? I thought like I would live the rest of my life not even worrying about this. And I realized that I had to go back to the first and who was in fantasy land, who believed regardless. And the point me I'm trying to prove here is that like in the first aspect of my, before the self-esteem issue came into the mix, like, I, it was this faith and this belief that regardless and no matter what happened, like, I would find someone. 
and it can be very it can be a very vulnerable place to be because it's a place where you open yourself to disappointments if you say okay i'm going to forget about marriage that's easier because like you are not giving that thing that chance to come in but faith Faith is opening a door to disappointment. And that's what makes it painful, but that's also what makes it beautiful. Because when God shows up into a matter, like you know that, wow, I believed, I trusted, I cried to God, and He actually showed up. And it's just a very beautiful thing. And in the second aspect, where I just became despondent and shrugged my shoulders and said, whatever happened, happened. Like it's very important to. Always consult the purpose of God. Like for me, I said, okay, let God's will be done. Let God's will be done. But in my heart, there were still that emotions. And I think the point in it is that even as you have faith and you believe for something, you have to have a relationship with God where you are speaking with God. You're like, okay, God, this is what I want. What do you want? What are you saying? And I'm in a stage now that I keep asking God, what are you saying? And he's like, hold on, child. Hold on, child. But that's it because once he's saying hold on that means that he's still involved and you just have to keep trusting and believing in him and i think that i still believe that i will meet someone someday and i still believe that if that's not what god's plan is for me i will be fine but until that thing either happens or doesn't happen i'm going to keep having faith because that is the thing that is the ability that god has given unto me like most of all, all of this that I'm saying is just to disprove that one voice that really caused a dent in my soul that you are not good enough. And that's what I'm praying that God destroys in the process, that evil voice. And I feel as if God has been destroying it and God has really been reconstructing and refurbishing my life. And I'm thankful for it and I'm looking forward to how he will do it in my life so that's basically all i have to say thanks for watching